All right, let's record. All right, hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about Revit errors and how to fix it. Now, typically what happened, general consensus, is that you know when we see this error message, everybody tends to ignore it, right? <laughs> you will get this sort of information. You want to save recovery, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or send it to you to Autodesk, and most of the time they don't reply back. Okay. So for Revit error, uh, there they tend to be very tedious um, and to manage and especially to fix it. Some of the error messages are very cryptic. I mean, when you look at it, it's like, what the heck does this mean, right? So most of the time, people just ignore it. They don't care. It's just like, okay, whatever it is, it's whatever it is. It won't affect my life. The problem with this is that um, when I actually did this research, um, Autodesk website information is very, very lacking, right? It's sort of like... Um, for, to for this big problem, they always emphasize you have to fix the error. They don't provide a lot of information for the users to actually understand what they they mean. So most of the time, people just say, "I don't care," right? To uh, let the error slides. Now, it's hard to fix if you don't know what yeah, is. exactly. That's the problem. And what I typically tell the user is that uh, you need to fix it because uh, there there is a reason why you need to so that you don't get this message constantly saying you want to save it, you want to save it, because most of the time it's that if you don't fix it, this will come up more, more often, and sometimes it can waste your valuable time. Okay, so in the past, when I actually got my Revit training, the one of the Autodesk guys tell us, right, uh, recommended if you want to keep your project uh, down to the minimums, uh, like let's say less error and more efficient, you have to keep your errors less than 200. 200 okay um, in most cases when I work on different projects errors are running up to like a thousand two thousand or even more right it's because people don't look at this right and then when more people keep on working on it um, you're gonna get slow down <laughs> and every time when you save it's like okay whenever someone saved you got locked out and then you have to wait until someone else saved. okay it happens all the time and the other thing is, is that Revit don't have a backup like AutoCAD, so whenever you're trying to save, right, you save locally, mm -hmm. and sometimes that could prone to crashing, and um, you lose everything. So whatever three hours work you did can just gone in an instance. So less error, everybody's happy, right? 80% mm -hmm. um, of the Revit errors can be fixed, okay? It's just that uh, it really depends on uh, what user wants to do. So today I'm just gonna focusing on the more common errors that the user can fix. Okay, I'm not using Dynamo. I'm just using like the, the everyday kind of a tools, and then this 80% will just fix the problem right away. Okay, so here are the highlighted. Uh, the last one is kind of be a little bit weird because um, this is like on Autodesk website they're, they're actually false. Like whatever they say, it's wrong. Okay. The first one we get to talk about is the highlight walls are not attached, but miss, right? Everybody always get this error. Now, how you get this error is that whenever you draw, let's say, a floor, like a floor or a roof, the first thing that Revit will tell you is, would you like to attach your wall to the underside of floor or a roof? If you say yes, that error will appear. Because what happens is that if any walls misses, that error just generated, okay? I wish Revit would turn this off. I don't know why Autodesk put that in. This is a stupid, stupid, stupid dialog box. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it is what it is. So my solution to everybody is that always say no, okay? Uh, if you say yes, then you kind of have to go into the wall and say press the attach, right? Mm -hmm. Select a little wall and say hit the attach tag. Target. That's the problem with Autodesk. They make it too smart, but sometimes they're stupid as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, uh, it's pretty common, uh, is when you have rooms that's clashing with other rooms, okay, it's always telling you that, oh yeah, you're going to have this redundancy. So how I typically fix it is that I would go into the model category and turn on the color fill just to check what is wrong with it. And when you see that uh, it's dark blue, it means that that room has been clashing. So. Simple stuff. Once I get into the, the demonstration, I'll show you how to, how to like kind of analyze it and just fix what's the problem. 
Yeah, it's a pretty subtle, subtle change, right? Yes. It's like, yeah. oh, this could break your model, but we're just going to give it a slightly darker blue color. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, this is also pretty common. Like line is off axis may cause inaccuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, you see all the time. What I typically do is with this is that if, if you're drawing anything, mm -hmm. uh, that's wall, roof, floor, detail components, anything, fill region, railing, uh, any linear elements, mm -hmm. always make it straight right. unless it's not mm -hmm. possible, right? The only thing I would ignore is property line mm -hmm. because property line is never straight. That's the problem. I've been telling Autodesk they should include, like, basically property line, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't give you any error. Just right. re ignore it. Right. The problem is that they don't. They say, nah, just let it let it slide, right? So it's never fixed. Right. Yeah, I was just noticing that actually on the the property line from the uh, survey that I yes. have for for Lakeview. Yes. Uh, it looks like it should be a right angle. Yes. But it's like slightly off, and I was thinking that you, you were going to have to maybe re, just rebuild in the file once we've got a, sure. a new thing just so that it's like. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like at least one of those should be. Yeah, one of them should be parallel. Yeah. And the the other one just let it, it yeah, slide. Yeah. Three, yeah, I've been telling Autodesk to ignore the property line, but mm -hmm. they just never get back to me on that. Right. So that's a very annoying, but you know, sometimes it's necessary evil. Right. All right, the next one is going to be very interesting. Uh, you always get this two elements are not automatically joined because one or both is not editable. Okay, this is a very cryptic, like nobody understand what this is, but <laughs> I'll tell you kind of like my experience what it is. Uh, this error exists if let's say you are working on this wall mm -hmm. and it's attaching to another wall that's owned by another user. Right. So whenever you sync up to Revit Central, it doesn't understand who's the owner, who's the real owner, right? So that's why you have that error message, this stupid thing. So this will exist and it will not go away until you actually delete it, delete the wall and then redraw it. But most cases, if you want to uh, like basically avoid this error, what I typically do is that when you're working on groups of wall attaching to another, let's say, adjacent wall, I always like at the corner end, I always do disjoin the end so that the wall is not hitting the other one. Okay. So, so like if you're doing a unit plan yes. and you have walls that hit like like the unit like you have the exterior walls outside yes. the group or inside the group, you just they just terminate at the wall that they're That's correct. Joining. They're not joining. That that's how you eliminate a lot of this, okay. right? Because the the problem with this is that it's so prevalent, uh, it's hard to get rid of it uh, because once you get down to construction documentation and when people start tagging and and doing a lot of uh, dimensioning. Mm -hmm. What end up happening is that if you want to fix that error, you have to kind of delete it, which means that your tag gets deleted, your dimension gets deleted. So it's kind of like, you know, it's better to fix it early on mm -hmm. than rather than just going in there and you have to do it later on. So double the work. Right. Okay, this next one, this is pretty common as well. Highlighter walls, uh, lines or walls are overlapping. Uh, so when you have two lines, especially when you have like, um, like area plant, area boundaries, room boundaries, anything wall related. Yeah, it's going to give you that, that stupid, stupid error message. Mm -hmm. But I think the 2018, however, added another one, which is floor. So if you have two floors that's not joining up together, mm -hmm. it will also give you that stupid error. Mm -hmm. Okay, something to check out with is that just check, make sure the, you know, there's no overlapping. This is annoying. I don't know why they, they bother adding that in because floor for my preferences is that, you know, sometimes they're not joining or the uh, like structural ones sit overlapping mm -hmm. some of them, right? So this gives a lot of issue, especially for the floors. But it's a 2018 thing, so we're not using it at the moment, but in the future, just keep in mind, you will get that error message constantly when you upgrade. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, sometimes what happens is that you're going to have this tiny little lines. Yeah, because what people tend to do is that when you draw something, mm -hmm. especially the this is a boundary line, right? Like area boundary, is that they always, like whenever you create a new area plan, they'll say, do you want the outline of your outside building to be whatever, like, you know, generate a line? Whenever people say yes, mm -hmm. Revit would generate the small little lines. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to very hard to kind of know where it is. So I typically tell people, just manually draw it in because every time Revit does it, 
it wants to do it automatically and then it just creates more problem. Uh, this is another common one. Um, they're identical uh, instance of the same place. So basically if you have uh, same Revit family and it's overlapping each other, it always gives you error. Uh, that's Revit, okay. Uh, delete it or else you just, when you do your scheduling, especially parking plans, <laughs> it's gonna be double up. So just make sure you check. Yeah, this one, this is the most annoying one, okay. Um, this error always notifies saying that, oh yeah, you have duplicate numbers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, whenever someone actually work on a project, let's say they have a, you insert a door and she inserts a door. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that when Revit syncs, it tells you, oh, there's a duplicate numbers. It's, uh, it's been bothering uh, for a lot of users. They keep on ignoring it. But unfortunately, Revit just does what a Revit does. I wish it, they could avoid it, but unfortunately, it's part of their error checking, right? So my solution is that if you're working on larger projects and then you have to have a number that is the same as the previous one, I would typically use another type, which is share parameter with duplicate numbers mm -hmm. rather than using the mark. Because the mark, it, whenever it sees an, a different value, uh, the same value, mm -hmm. it just goes crazy, mm -hmm. right? It just, uh, sometimes you can generate easily 600 errors based on this alone. On yeah, on mark. Uh, it's a very annoying one. Mm -hmm. That's the unfortunate thing. I mean, that's uh, how Revit operates. Okay, this one is the... Uh, I know that a lot of users, they don't understand what this is. Incorrect schema, fail to save. <laughs> that sounds bad. Yeah, it does sounds bad. I don't think I've ever seen that. Okay, uh, so this what happens is that whenever uh, your C drive is full, uh, local C drive, mm -hmm. then what it does is it tells you this message. Oh, that's, yeah. that's like a Photoshop cache is full. Yes, exactly. So in the website, I'm just going to just pop up um, our desk website. This is what it tells me, but it's the wrong information. I've been I've been trying to correct them, they just won't listen, right? Issues trying to open when you get error message contain incorrect schema. The error is introduced, blah blah blah, copy get corrupted. They always say corrupted, but it's not the corruption. It's basically uh, theoretically, whenever your user profile, like let's say you log into your computer, you theoretically your user folder has a limit. Okay. Once you reach that, let's say twenty, I think uh, when I talk to Brian, the IT guy, he says that, you know, theoretically it's about 20 gig. Okay. When you hit that threshold 20 gig, mm -hmm. uh, you will pop up this message. It's saying that you will not save. Mm -hmm. So the best chance I would uh, tell user is that if you want to kind of fix this, mm -hmm. delete the older files from that folder, from the user folder. Uh, if you want to avoid this error in the future, change it to a different path. What I typically do is that uh, repath the default path, like let's say the user to Revit project so that every time you save, it's always going to be outside of that user folder. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know a couple of users had this issue before. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what it does. And then when I told them that it's this issue, right. then everything works fine. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go into the tricks and demo. So hopefully those basically basic common stuff um, helps you a little bit, all right, how to deal with this. Okay, let's go to tricks and demos. So the first thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna open up a project which is uh, Tower 4, which is mm -hmm. pretty old. Uh, this particular project, if you wanna check an error, this is the place you go. You go to manage, you see this little button here, review warning, you click on that. And what it does is that it will bring up a list of all the errors that's in this project. Uh, sometimes if you have over 2000 errors, uh, it can be slow, mm -hmm. okay? So what I typically, tell user to do is that you just have to do this once. Mm -hmm. And once you do it once, you export the error outside, right? Okay, so here, this is all the errors. Mm -hmm. um, you see that it's about 18,000. So the first thing I would do is to export, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, put it in desktop somewhere. And what happens is that sometimes you close it and you open up again, it, it becomes a very, uh, like, very slow, right? So what I typically do is that I just go to this error message double click, what it does is that it brings up all the error message, okay? You notice that there's a lot of stuff um, like high wall misses, uh, element join do not intersect, uh, room tags outside, those are like common things that you will see it, like room is tag outside, blah, 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 multiple room enclosed. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is that that annoying uh, duplicate mark, right? Duplicate uh, mark, let's see, where is it? Yeah, there you go, doors, okay? 
how do you fix this quickly? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you run into this mark where it has a lot of errors, uh, how do you fix it pretty quickly? The first thing I would do is that if you want to fix the, the duplicate mark, well, good thing I didn't save this project. Uh, first thing I would do is that you go into this uh, 3D mode, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, turn off everything except the door, okay? Turn off everything except the door, okay? Next thing what you, okay, I should turn off the import category so I don't see it. So let's just say there's a lot of errors in here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go into this and say, okay, on my door, 475. And you notice that there's going to be a lot of errors, 36, okay? Um, so what I would do in here for the doors is for the mark, I would put an X and remove the X. So if you want like an error to kind of disappear in an instance, mm -hmm. put an X. It will tell you that, oh yeah, you got a, you got a duplicate mark. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Next thing you do is that you remove that X. Okay. And what happened is that that error warning just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So if you have like 600 different er like errors within the door just saying duplicate marks, mm -hmm. that's how I would typically do it. Now, when you're doing like a high-res project, this is why I recommend people do not use Mark for your thing. Mm -hmm. Because when you do scheduling, this is where it gets people a lot of time. Right. Because Mark is very sensitive to changes mm -hmm. and it's not consistent. Like let's say you go from one level to let's say level 20, right? Each of those uh, door is has unique Mark. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do a door schedule, you have to go and do it to 600 different doors. That's a lot of chore. That's a lot of work. Right, in addition to again finding a different number to each of them. Yes, is exactly. There, what, like, is there an example? What is Mark for? Like, that's it's for basically like a, a door number, right? right? But the problem is, is that um, it has it's too sensitive to different changes. So each of those doors is going to have different unique number. When you group it together, it doesn't follow the number from the previous one because it treats all of those doors as individual. Mm -hmm. So this is why I say I don't use it because right. it doesn't follow that. Right. So the best in the future, I'll probably do a door mm -hmm. type uh, schedule, how to do it for a complex project right. so that you will not use the mark, use another way right. where you can combine two value into one. And when you do the scheduling, you can do you know different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a more complicated way of organizing. Okay, yeah, you but can select all the doors in the, within the schedule too. And just have it yes, show that's the next. Yeah, same. you can do the same thing as well. So if you if you do run into that, the, the first thing is that people always use three D right. select it, right. pretty easy. Right. Yeah. Um, the other way, yes, I agree. Use the um, schedule. Uh, so what you do is that you go to schedule, um, and just choose the door. Just say door mark. Okay, so what I would do is that just do the mark, M for mark. And then sorting, I would say do not itemize every item. And then say okay. What it does is that it will it will collapse all the marks into one and then you put X and then you do remove the X. So that's how you do it. So there you go. So here the mark X. It'll tell you that there's gonna be multiple, <laughs> multiple errors. Um, but this is how you do it quickly. Right. So I don't, you know, the this mark you can easily da, done. Okay, it says that yeah, you're gonna have a lot, yeah. Yeah. and then you remove it, and then that's it. Right. I wonder how many errors. To me, it's like easier than like. Sure, sure. <laughs> but I think what happens is that it really depends. So some people are not into schedule because they're right. very scared, right. right? So 3D is probably the easiest, but right. that's fine. You can do it both right. ways. See how many errors do I reduce by then? So just double checking. So this is the first error fixing. The next error fixing I'm going to show you is uh, has to do with like let's say wall attach and stuff like that. So we'll see. All right. You notice that 200 errors mm -hmm. just gone down from 1800. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty pretty fast, right? So that's how you fix the error. The next error you want to look at is the. Um, See, double click on this. Okay, so let's say for example, highlight wall misses. Now, I typically what I would do is that I will copy this ID number, right? I'll turn on all the walls. 
Oh, actually, you can go all and then just pick the wall first. Okay. So what I would typically do is that whenever you select the ID, do not click on show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you have hundreds and hundreds of views, mm -hmm. the minute you said show, it's going to go to the closest one first, which is site, and you're not going to see it. And sometimes this thing can take forever. Right. So what I like to do is I just hit OK and go into a 3D mode. It will show you where it is. And then when you click on this and say detach target, just keep doing it. This, this stupid error, uh, it's not going to go away, right? When you say keep hitting that detach target, mm -hmm. it's going to detach. And when you click on it again, it just say this document does not contain any element. Oh. It's very stupid. I don't know why it is like, OK, detach, 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 right? You keep so pressing the button. It worked once. It worked once. It doesn't tell you no okay. it, that's the stupid thing <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying like revit has a lot of stupid things it just doesn't tell you mm -hmm. so you do the same thing you just go go to each and every one uh if you have like a dynamo mm -hmm. um then you can do this probably routinely mm -hmm. um just attach target you see that it keeps doing that and now it doesn't have an error so that's how you kind of go through each list and going on all right the next one i'm going to take a look is the uh, elements are joined by not intersect, right? So first I will just copy this again. So the process is just basically copying the ID and say click on this and says what warning does it have? Okay, you can see unjoin, okay? Again, this is the same thing, the, the previous one, the detach. This one I'm just gonna say unjoin. And then when I click on this, it says that does not have any error. Okay, let's go through the list. It's pretty straightforward once you uh, get into it. Now for the tag, tag is going to be a little bit tricky because it says that, okay, for the view, uh, when you select the ID, right, let's say, okay, it will tell you the tag. It says that, okay, it does this, and then you can say move, oh, move to room, okay? Um, and now it says that it doesn't have so any. Is there an option to add later? No. That's the unfortunate. That's the thing about the room is that, okay, so whenever you... Here, let me go into one of the floor plans. Oh, not this one. Let's see which, where is the better one. Ah, sure, good enough. Okay, so for this particular one, let's assume that you have a, a room here. Okay, this doesn't, ah, let me draw a room separator. Okay, let's assume that that's, that's your room, okay? Now, the problem with uh, a lot of users is that, okay, they put a room, and then sometimes that room move. And then what they typically do is say, just say hit okay. <laughs> okay? Don't do that, okay? Uh, whenever you do is that this tag, just move it back. And whenever you move this out, always choose the first option, which is move to room, okay? I don't know why users always ignore it. Just say okay, 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 right? right? Don't do that. Because the minute that you do it, it adds to your error count so that kind of kills you <laughs> at the end uh, so yeah most of the time I just say like, look at look at this error this can be very easily fixed if they choose the move to room but most of the time people just say ah, don't, don't bother all right for this room multiple room uh, let's double check where it is you see that quarter 700 okay sometimes you don't even know where that object supposed to be so what I typically do is that I just go into here uh, just say OK and tells me it's at level 7 mm -hmm. so what I typically do in this particular case uh, I could go let's see if I have a working all right yeah sometimes I don't have a good plan like because what happens is that whenever I do a lot of projects I like to create a plan for everything mm -hmm. so that that view becomes kind of like my go-to view mm -hmm. So in this case, I don't have it. I'm just going to choose the structural plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, OK, level 7. It exists in level 7. That's right, because you don't necessarily have yeah. a sheet view for every floor. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> so for this case, uh, you're not going to see it uh, until you turn on those information. So for this one, by discipline, I'm just going to say all. OK, so you show everything. Next thing I would do is uh, just go to room turn this thing on okay just to see what's in there like what is causing it to not show up okay you notice that okay that room I'm assuming that this room is overlapping with this room and you notice that that wall itself that wall's not separating. yes it's not separating so what you're gonna do is that it's click on the wall what is it okay it's not room bounding so you click on that and then <gasps> it fix itself 
okay sometimes you have to kind of look at it like okay where's the color differences and stuff like that that's a visual cue so this is how i typically go into the rooms and see what's what's not fixed now you can use roof separation um you can use this room separation but i try to avoid using room separation as much as possible i would use uh, curtain wall uh, just duplicate it as uh, a room separation so use a curtain wall just call room separation room boundary right in here I would just say the molly in just get rid of it so this is becomes my room boundary the reason why I like to use this is because you can actually have room boundary for multiple floors so it becomes much easier for you to kind of like exactly so let's say this particular one uh, appears in multiple floor and I will see also choose empty okay so it doesn't see it and then when you say okay and if let's say I want to split the room I'll just draw it in and then there we go right it's just a room boundary so what I typically do is I just joining the joint just in case mm -hmm. okay so this is how I do my room boundary okay it will not see it you will not print it um, you can you can spread this to multiple levels that's the nicest thing about this I like I like using curtain wall as my room boundary mm -hmm. because if you to do it with your room separation you have to do it for every floor it doesn't make sense so I told people don't bother okay next I'm just gonna look at like let's say room separation might cause an accuracy you know you click on this again copy this um, and then you go into your manage and then say okay it doesn't tell you where the location this is why I don't like about the room boundary because it doesn't tell you where it is you see so your only option is uh, either you show it or you don't show it so here furniture. it says furniture yes but it doesn't tell you where the error it doesn't show the reason why I didn't show is because um, it could be hidden inside the view you don't even know so how you find that option is you kind of have to put it into your area plans so it could be one of these plans that it is hidden so this is why I told the users that whenever you see people trying to hide element right rabbit would not know where to look for because it doesn't see it so your only option is that if you do see it like that let's say assume that um, show you see that no good view to be found and I say okay what I typically do is that I hit delete button see okay it says that multiple area so it's doing some work somewhere yes it's doing something so the next step I want to check is that for a furniture let's say there's a furniture it does not show up in all view so let's turn that on and hit okay now Revit will appear like those object will appear in that room now you can say show me where it is okay S -s couple tricks because sometimes what happened is that if you can't find it mm -hmm. it was put on a work set that could be in the wrong work right. set and will not show up in all view no I typically put it as a separate one right. you know you put your areas in a separate work set. separate work set I typically do it it's just because it's uh, more convenient mm -hmm. okay doesn't tell you and then you can say hit show but it's gonna take me forever so you know yeah it's gonna tell you a, it's gonna be a lot of you so rather than doing that I'm not gonna do it right but this is how you kind of like go in there and just take a look mm -hmm. inaccuracy uh, okay maybe I should look at work set one now if you want to like know where this area boundary what I typically do is that I would select this line and right click and say I said category and see if there is like an error message here so this is fine uh, you go into like each level let's say that this is one I would go in here I said category and see if there is like all the other stuff yeah just get rid of that stuff I mean we try to keep it as clean as possible right and then if you have this like some sometimes people they don't they miss this right they don't care like this sort of a thing you should delete it as much as possible so that you don't run into this problem and try to clean I try to clean it up as much as possible let's like say I want to do it like this the reason why you want to clean up as much as possible is because you're gonna treat this as uh, key plan 
because previous my previous uh, um, presentation I did was that you, I always use the area plans as my key plan because once you do your boundary this is your key plan <laughs> so we'll try to keep it as, as clean as possible so here's the same thing so I'll just go in here Oops. Uh, let's see I say category that's right so now we can go in here okay what is overlapping so show me okay sometimes it could be multiple oh there you go so there's multiple you get rid of it now you have again I like to make it one straight line so I hate having like multiple lines because the multiple lines you have the, the, the worse it can get like for example like this uh, you either go trim there we go and then have it kind of close up or you can say okay that's my line there and get rid of this line so you try to keep it as clean as possible and then all this duplication uh, it's just user error pretty much and this could throw you off like depending on if you're doing area calculation right. you want to get like the exact number right. that little line sometimes you know it's the differences between 0.5 to you know whatever if you're under or over so trying to keep it as clean as possible and sometimes you it's very difficult to see what line because the when I did this presentation I try to like okay find it okay where is it it's, it's very difficult when I go show you can show it it's very difficult it could be one of the line let's say I hit delete okay there you go that's the line it's there so when when you don't have errors that's good I think the next level it's gonna have a lot of errors because um, as you keep fixing this area, uh, you will notice that your performance it starts to um, kind of boost up your performance. Because a lot of error fixing is all about maintenance. It's like a car you need to maintain, right? So there we go, boundary. You see that there is a bunch of boundaries. When I hit delete, that's all you do. Again, I'm just gonna hit show. You see that you don't see it, right? Normally you would say, "Oh, show me there." Did you have to check the little thingy or you just highlight it? I think it's just Yeah, you could check, but it's really difficult to see where where the error is supposed to be. If you have trouble seeing the error, I typically just go to the corner and see, "Okay, there's an error there. There's an error there. Nope. Nope. Nope." Okay. Okay, so you notice that it's it's right this area. Okay. So it's one of those lines. Okay, it could be this there's one here hit delete so that's how I do it it's just basically go to everyone I wish there's a dynamo that does this a lot of this but I'm kind of old school from like 2009 I keep fixing error I'm kind of telling people this is how I would do it for error fixing back then no there is no dynamo unfortunately so I do it old school method um, I'm gonna get Trevor to do it because uh, he's more dynamo. For me, I was like, a eh, little bit, but the dynamo is kind of like, you know, uh, do people are people interested in like l programming language kind of a thing, or is it? It's to me when I actually look at a lot of the dynamo scripting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There are some interested stuff, but you know, once you get into the programming language, people just fall apart. They just right. don't understand it. Right. So I'd rather see it more of. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd rather show people more of like the generic stuff you right. will encounter day to day. Like the easy, way to find easy way to find. I mean, if you can do it easier, yeah. then you don't have to rely on Dynamo just to do right. stuff, right? Because right. Dynamo requires you to ma maintain it constantly. Right. So, so I. You just maintain something else instead of maintaining the model itself. Yeah, yeah. And also, the other thing is, is that we pay Autodesk money. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be doing the programming, not us. Right. We're not supposed to program it. <laughs> right <laughs> so why pay pay them and they give us uh, dynamo and ask us to do programming right it makes no sense right so it's a lazy attempt oh, no, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I I've been I've been kind of telling you know Autodesk you know the, it's like no i I don't want to program it right you are supposed to do it for me right. and we're paying you this much and you're not giving us the result mm -hmm. so they give us dynamo okay do it I was like no no <laughs> All right, slightly off axis. Again, this is a kind of common things that a lot you, you will see. Um, now, keep in mind, like for this particular instance, parking model is this ID, right? Whenever you click on copy this, and when you hit OK, 
it just tells you you cannot select it. So you just have to keep in mind to pick this object right here because this ID line is different from this. This is in a sketch mode. Okay? So you can't get into the sketch until you found the Exactly, exactly. So here I'm just gonna go into all and go to floor, right? Just to keep it easy. And then here what I would do is that say OK and then edit the boundary and then what I do is that I select that and see okay there's my error there's my error show me my error okay there we go so here I just make it straight okay once there's no error then I'll just join it together that's it so those are basically some of the tricks that I usually do so you you first select the object edit that mode Go find and set the line, and that's how you do it. Straightforward, pretty easy. A sweep, like all off axis again with this uh, generic stuff. Wall, slight axis. You guys know how to do this. Just select it and say what's okay. Now this one, two two object element. Okay, it says wall, right? So here I'm just gonna go into um, wall itself, and then turn off the floor. Okay, so the first thing I would do is that for the wall, select that object and say OK. Okay, there's your wall. I would isolate it first, see what it is. Okay, if, if you see this object has multiple level, then I would not touch that, okay, because it's bad enough. So what I would do is I'd pick the lesser one. Uh, you just have to find which one is more uh, challenging, right, to delete, right? If you have that object that's multiple level, then I will not touch that. So you have to go to the reverse, right? So reverse of that. So next I'll just say OK and then say isolate it. Hmm, doesn't show. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't show. Very interesting. Okay, it's a very small things. So what I typically do is that if you if you do find this, this is how I do it. I just will go cut. Okay, and then I uh, just say okay. And what you're gonna do is that just paste the same location, same place. That's how you fix it. <laughs> and then your error is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because it's put in the wrong, I think it's the work set. So whenever it says that, okay, it's interior work set, okay, I understand that it's under that link work set. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do it. It's like, if you want to like fix that error quickly, just cut, paste, that's it, it's fixed. But just keep in mind, if you have tags, a lot of tags and dimensions, they'll break, break, all. They'll break it all. So you, it's kind of like you have to find the lesser of the two evil. Okay, because the previous wall I show you is that it contains multiple levels with all the doors and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's either that, which means you break multiple levels, or you break one. Right. So you just have to find the which is the least amount of damage to your model. Mm -hmm. So, so that's how you fix it. Uh, edit element. There's a lot of it. You notice that there's a lot. Mm -hmm. So I've been telling people um, make sure that whenever you have wall like someone's working on a wall and you're working on a wall, just make sure that the end just doesn't join or else you're gonna get this error message. It's a very annoying. Uh, I won't go too much into hydro supply because I noticed that this one has um, piping, okay? Uh, piping is very easy to fix. Uh, how you do it is that you select this object. Hang on, is that all consultant stuff? It could be consultant stuff copied in. Yeah, oh yeah. But if you want to fix that error, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll show you quickly how to do it. Yeah, but if then you re-import their, I know. they update their thing, then you still yes. have, then you have to fix it again. That's right. Delegate it. Yes, that's right. You know this hy hydro supply line? You see that, yeah, this is this is the stuff that they want, okay? Right. There is another one is, um, if you pick a pipe, let's see, not this, here, let me go back. It's the pipe itself, not the hydro supply. Uh, so what I would do with this is that let's say okay, okay. There's a pipe. There is a flow in here. I don't know which one is it, but there is an error. It will tell you an error. 
but I guess it has to be built into this hydro supply line. You see that there's this hydro supply. I would just click other. You know, this is their stuff. Yes, I know. Sometimes it's a very annoying. But there's a flow in there. Like if it gives you an error message, there is a one you can change. Just say do not calculate, then it fix itself. We don't care, right? But this one, yes, definitely. If you do run into this problem with the piping, mm -hmm. it's not our job, it's the consultant's job. So just make, make sure that they, they do the due diligence. So some I think this one's copied in. Some panel in the curtain wall may align. This problem most likely ignorable, but the problem occurs. Okay, so what happened with this is that whenever you draw a sketch, right? Like let's say if it's like a corner piece that has like an angle and stuff like that, you will run into this problem. Uh, so most of the time, if you cannot do anything, just I would say ignore it. But mm -hmm. most of the time, if you can fix it, you can fix it. But in this case, some of them, you, you it's kind of like you can't really do anything about it. Okay, uh, room separation overlapping. Again, you just select one object. You either hit delete mm -hmm. or you go in there and find where it is and then just make sure that they're separated. Mm -hmm. So some of the stuff, you know, it's very easy fix, but it's just that sometimes users just too lazy to fix it <laughs> yeah they don't bother looking so they just do it so most of the stuff it's very uh, okay identical okay I typically do it weekly oh, okay. so it, it just has to do with performance mm -hmm. right because what happens is that if whenever you have multiple people working on it and if you don't do it like on weekly basis mm -hmm. they will see slow down performance right. um, I've seen one where someone actually do detailing. Mm -hmm. uh, one person is working a model, mm -hmm. one person save, and then it takes them forever to just do any detail, even though right. Right. detail is the least amount of work to right. do it. Yeah. But yeah. it's fast, but it does happen. Yeah. Now, the other thing also to keep in mind is that if you have a lot of details imported from AutoCAD, mm -hmm. like let's say CAD details, I've seen this happen where whenever user do, do a detail, they would explode it and then what happened with that exploding uh, is you have a bunch of lines mm -hmm. and that lines can carry a lot of weight within Revit and it, it processes a lot of time. Right. Yeah, my understanding is that best practice is never explode. Your never like explode, that. but sometimes it's a necessary evil, someone did it. Right. You don't know until there's an error and right. you have to go in there and fix right. it. So that does happen. Uh, so what I typically recommend is that if you need a detail, just let me know. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll whip it up for you quickly. Right. If you have CAD stuff, just send it to me. I'll just fix right. it up. All right, so all of that so stuff. like when you, that family I sent you, you yes. were like, none of this CAD in portfolio. Yeah, like, yeah. Out. No, no the, you know the reason why is that I exploded mm -hmm. and see what lines are there, right. and they're all spline. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. no, well, see, that was, what that was, that was a JPEG that I had to manipulate and then right. an Illustrator. Yes, and then yes. I made it CAD and that, that, then I could yeah, so what I typically do is that easy. it is easy, but the only problem is is that um, sometimes when Revit picks up spline, right. that sh shot up your process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay, curtain wall, like all this stuff is pretty easy. Like, uh, let's say, for example, identical, same place. All you have to do is just delete them. Sometimes what happens is that whenever people copy stuff, they will just copy the same place. They don't, they just ignore it, right? So we'll just double check and see what, what is in there, what's overlapping, then we'll just delete it. But this one has a lot, so you see that people copy accidentally. So it's nothing much you can do about it, some of the stuff, but most of the time I would help people maintain it, right? It's more like a project audit for every week. Mm -hmm. So if you do run into problems where your model's slowing down, just let me know. I'll go in there, I'll just double check, and first I'll check the error, I'll check what's, uh, what's causing it. Mm -hmm. um, you will run into really, like, really obscure error. Mm -hmm. uh, this does happen. Um, what happens is that if you turn your model, let's say for example, uh, this error is very obscure. Um, this will impact your file. Um, I noticed that some people, uh, they like to ch put the floor um, and make it structural, okay? Put it as a structural. Mm -hmm. You can do it, that's fine. But I have to warn you, uh, this error will prevent you from editing your um, your outline of this. Yeah, it does happen. When you have structural column um, kind of join up with this, 
and it is infecting multiple layers of your structure. This is one of the weird, most weird obscure. It took me weeks to get like to know which one causes that error. Uh -huh. Once you get that error, I deleted that floor, uh -huh. and then the error just went away right. because it was really like bizarre. One of those bizarro error that you don't even know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Until you figure out what floor that caused that problem. Right. But you will run into it. But if you do run into it, let me know. I'll take a look. Because some errors I've encountered it. Some errors I never did. Mm -hmm. It's new. But most of the time, I think 90% of the errors, it, I encounter most of it, right? So it's, whatever you see, you know, I kind of understand what, what it means. But yeah, so if you do run into that problem, just let me know. But a lot of time, it just it's about maintenance. Just to let people know that you can fix it pretty easily. Um, so a lot of the stuff can be like ignored, like 80% of it can be fixed right away. Mm -hmm. It's just that user just choose to ignore it. <laughs> right. uh, it's not a fun job, but you know, once you understand it, right. it makes, makes everybody happy. I well, would say. You don't get a nice drawing at the end of it. So it's no. like, obviously it's not work, right? Yeah. Yeah. This one is kind of like, uh, it's more like, um, you try to maintain a car, right? Mm -hmm. To keep the engine running. <laughs> But anything else? Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much conclude our presentation. So if you do run into any problems, just let me know. No problem. So this is probably the last uh, session before the new year. Uh, so next year uh, we'll see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna probably showcase like uh, some stuff that you can do inside Rabbit that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, interesting stuff. Have you been ever been over keyboard shortcut? Have you ever yeah, I try to keep it away. Now, you can do it, right? I, I don't mind it if you guys do it. The problem with uh, keyboard shortcuts is that if you have different keyboard shortcuts than the other person, mm -hmm. what happens is that sometimes people press some certain things, um, right. and then the next version, you have to do the same thing again. It, too bad there's no, well, I think there is a way you can copy those sh mm -hmm. keyboard shortcuts, but I try to keep it out of the box as much as possible right. so that whenever there's a new user, they're consistent kind of a thing. You can do it right. like heart's content. Oh, yeah, but. Then I'm like, oh, I don't yeah, yeah. I don't like to sure. actually look for the ring button. Sure. <laughs> much, too much I, I totally understand. I, I know that everybody, if you know how to do shortcuts, yes, do it on your own. Right. But I'm not going to support support yeah. whatever you guys are doing. <laughs> if that's your call, right? right. But the next version, just keep in mind, you have to do it all over again. Right. Right. Yeah, whatever you Yeah, go back in. Yeah. But I'm mostly trying to show people like, okay, how do you collaborate, right? This work set, how do you create work set? That's the other thing. Right. Uh, what's the strategy and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Probably in the future, I'll probably talk about that. Mm -hmm. Topo surface, I'm not sure if you guys seen into massing uh, or not. Yeah. Very little. Yeah. Um, but the topo surface is, is you know. Hard the, to manipulate the it. you do with the, the yeah. with that is, uh, yeah, gotta be. And like I've, because I've used it, used it a bunch, but then it's like really painful. Like yeah, it is uh, very painful. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should talk about you know how to manipulate it and right. like couple strategy you can use like let's say to create a road and stuff like that, right. like um, curbs mm -hmm. if you want. Um, can we do a session on filters? Filters? Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, filters is uh, it's a fun topic. Uh, it can get very tedious. Well, it can get very complicated depending on what you guys want to use, mm -hmm. look at. But I'll probably go with the most common, how to how to do certain things. Uh, let's say if you want to turn an object to certain things or something to something, then yes, we can we can certainly do that. Okay, I'm probably gonna do it more of like the common stuff. Like let's say, how do you get? Let's say you want to do a code plan and you want a different color for let's say this fire rated wall versus that fire rated wall. Yes, you can do it filters and then a couple of things. Um, you know, you want to make the wall demolish. Let's say dash line. How do you do it? Yeah, sure. I can do I, I can do one on filters because filters is a very powerful thing. I like it, but I know some people uh, get messed up with uh, what to do with it. But it's very fun. It's very fun. All right, that's it. I was feeling some uh, some detailed component type things. Well, not even yeah, components from from Brecken, and I discovered all the the lines.